It's bounce back week for the Wisconsin Badgers coming off a brutal loss to Iowa. Can Braden Locke unlock the offense this week? I'm Rajiv. He's Justin. It's the Bucky Report. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh my God. Game analysis. Touchdown Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Woo-hoo! Thanks for joining us and on Wisconsin. Welcome into the Bucky Report. We are your hosts, Rajiv Chabra and Justin Jolka, in for our midweek quick hit episode talking about the upcoming Illinois game. We are at the Bucky Report on Twitter, at the Bucky Report on YouTube, and anywhere you have your podcast. If you like the show, certainly subscribe to it so you can find out when we're doing more videos. We're very, very thankful to those of you who have subscribed and joined the community and listened to our videos. Um, it's been great. So, all the feedback, all the comments have been fantastic. With that, Justin, um, we had a really rough weekend, and I think we need to just put this behind us now. I, I've had a couple days to just sort of stew on this, and you know what? All we can do is move forward. How are you feeling this week going into a clear needed bounce back? Anxious? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know how to feel for this one. Um, honestly, in a way, I'm somewhat relieved because expectations for this season now are – let's find some things that work and go forward and build. It's not, we need to be so fine to do these things in order to accomplish what our goals are for the season. We're effectively out of the West race. Now that we, obviously there are some roads for us that mm-hmm. to still get back into it, but it's not the end of the world to me. And I feel like there's less pressure now for a team that's already struggling to just find its way. And they can focus on just trying to do some things better. Now I know that the pressure is, they likely on the team themselves is probably looking at like, we got to find a way to get back in this, but I'm hoping that not feeling like you're the, you're more the hunter instead of the hunted might play better for them going forward. If there was ever a time for the mentality of one game at a time, Mm -hmm. one play at a time, it's now Mm -hmm. because you're right. The expectations have totally been sort of settled into let's just see what we can do. And now we've got a new quarterback, so we have no idea what he can do, what he can actually bring to the team. We're going to get into that today, but there's so many question marks. But I think it's just it's just about bouncing back. I mean, we, you know, we got kicked in the teeth last week. Let's be honest, we got kicked in the mouth. And the last thing we need is to come out and make more mistakes and and further sort of dig our our hole even more. We just need to be what we are, and we're clearly much better than that game again against Iowa last week because. You know, scoring six points, having just total inept offensive scoring ability, and letting a team beat us that had 37 yards passing and Deacon Hill at quarterback. I mean, we we need to get that bad taste out of <clears throat> bad taste out of our mouth and start fresh now. You know, I mean, it's like we just can't let that happen again. It's it was brutal, but yeah. All right, let's get into it, Justin. The Bucky reports three big things. Three big things this week. Um, the first one, we kind of touch on a little bit. I'm going to start this one off. Heart, dedication, and determination following last week's defeat. Not only were we beaten on the field, I think we were beaten from a heart perspective. You saw some of the Iowa defenders, like Castro and DeGene, and a lot of their, even some of their offensive players, they played with more heart. They looked like they wanted a lot it of more than we did. Yeah. Totally. And that's what I want to see. That's the number one thing I'm looking for coming into this week is do we have that burning fire, that burning desire to get back on track, to, to, to go against a former coach who beat us last year? Because just looking at this week in, in itself, it's a revenge game for us. Mm-hmm. These guys embarrassed us on our home field last year. And it was the rock bottom moment of our program over the last maybe 20 some years. So I think it's really a, it's going to be a testament to our heart and dedication. I'm really, really looking for a response. I said that last week on our on our weekend show. It's all about response right now, and it's do we have what it takes? Can we come out and play our game? Because if we do, and if we play with more heart and dedication and determination, I think it's clear that we're better than this team, at least in my opinion. And I feel like that's really the number one thing we need. So. Not only did we did this team beat us last year, we also got beaten last week. It's all on this week, and how can we respond? Yeah, one of the takeaways I've had from this season so far is it seems like I expected the attitude to change with these guys a little bit. It seems like we kind of have lost our 
understanding of how to win. And I, that's one of the things that I think they need to learn and that they can over that, the remainder of this season can hopefully get back in their kind of their, their uh, bag of tricks. They need to figure out, you know, how to go and take it rather than expecting it to fall in their lap. Because in games like this, where they play a gamey opponent that wants to come out there and has things to prove themselves. And we've seen this kind of the last few years against teams like Minnesota and Iowa. It's, it's games where we go in and we used to have the expectation to win. And now it's kind of like people are, they, they feel like they've lost confidence in themselves. And when something goes wrong, they just kind of wilt a little bit. We have to find a way to gut it out. And Nebraska has been dealing with this for years now. Mm-hmm. The last thing we want to do is fall into that mental kind of place where you just continue to implode because you're, you're experiencing bad luck. We need a couple of these games where we play somebody tough that kind of plays us down to the fourth quarter where we go out and take it. And we haven't had that recently. And that's that's why it's kind of a big deal in this one for us to go out there and show that we want it, show that we can take it and that we have the talent to do so. And hopefully, you know, the guys respond well after a tough week. You know, they kind of have that look in the mirror and be like, hey, we all have to just do what our, what individually we're required to do and what we need to do to win and get the job done. Do you think there's going to be a hangover from last week, or do you feel like that's been a focus of the coaches this week and, and being able to be able to get past the the really, frankly, a huge disappointment on our home field? I'm a little worried about like the hangover and how much – I mean, obviously we know we, we need to see this number one thing, this tar- dedication determination, but are we concerned that there's a hangover? I am a little concerned, and, and it has nothing to do with the fact – like there's there's a lot of aspects to take from this. One of them is with us losing Mordecai. Like, that's a big yeah. loss to a lot of these guys. That's somebody they counted on as their leader. I mean, I, I think he was a team captain. You have somebody that that's in there that, you know, he's kind of their guy that that they draw on for, you know, that poise. And he's gone now. And you have a young guy who is kind of going to be feeling his way through this. Somebody else is going to have to step up and kind of be the leader in that, that huddle. And I know Locke is going to do his best to be the leader at the quarterback position. But he's the inexperienced one. There's going to have to somebody that, you know, kind of, Let's him know, hey, you'll be fine. We got you. And some of these guys need to do it. And that's going to kind of lead into the the second one here. Um, the way I look at it is they have to pick him up. Like the offense, number two, offensive production, lock receivers and offensive line protection. You know, a receiver needs to pick him up in this game. Somebody has to go out there and have a big game and get it done for him and make some plays that we haven't been making. Like we've made all the easy ones. You need to go out there and make a tough catch where you have somebody draped on you and make a big play for your quarterback because this is a young guy who's just trying to build confidence, and he needs somebody to go out there, and he needs to trust his guys are going to go out there and get it for him if he puts the ball out there. Now, that's one of the areas where I think you and I both agree is that there's a chance Locke could show a little better than what Mordecai Mm -hmm. is because I think we both agree Mordecai was a little conservative with his passing, and I think Locke – a lot of the practice reports we heard both in spring and in fall were he was very aggressive. Now he also had more turnovers in camp, but he also had more big plays downfield. So it's one of those things where I kind of look at it and it's like, well, what do we have here with him? Is is he a guy who's going to take those shots? Like if he trusts his eyes, is he going to make the throws? And if he makes the throws, is he making the right throws? I think that this is a smart kid. As long as his eyes don't betray him and he's seeing coverages the right way, he should be fine, but we'll see what happens. I Yeah. Illinois is definitely not Iowa's defense. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I've got some numbers when we get to our prediction segment. I want to talk about I Illinois has got some not so good looking numbers this year, mm-hmm. but I totally agree. I mean, I think you you said it right. Receivers need to find that big play. That's what we've been missing, right? Like mm-hmm. it's that that big 50 50 catch that Bryson Green like that. He had a great play in the first drive against Iowa, but we need more of that, right? What 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 I've seen in my perspective is simply that Lock throws a better deep ball than Mordecai. That mm-hmm. to me is clear. DK, that ball to DK was fantastic in the back of the end zone that wasn't completed, but it was a beautiful ball. Mm-hmm. You can see he throws it really pretty. He clearly has a fantastic arm. It's all about the mentality and the decision making. And you got to think that with a week of reps, right, taking first team reps, working with Longo, working with every all the coaches, that will have corrected itself. Now, it's a long process. I'm not saying he's going to come out here and just start slinging it all over the field, but I do expect him to be, obviously he wasn't really prepared to come in and take over Iowa. Not to an extent as a backup, you're always prepared, but you're really not. And now with the week of reps and you're like you said, not facing Iowa's very, very good defense, 
it's going to open things up a little bit. And it's all about his confidence. We know the receivers are good enough to get open, at least to an extent. Can he find them? Can he make the right reads? And can he release the ball, like you said? And the receivers definitely have to step, have to step up. Offensive line. Look, I mean, you got a, a guy who's back there who's taken some of his first snaps at the college level, and you're facing a defensive team that's really not that good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see offensive line issues in this game. You're playing mm-hmm. Illinois. This is a team that has given up 27 points. I think that's right, 27 points a game so far. They're not anything to write home about. They gave up 44 points to Purdue. So I, I don't really want to see them getting a lot of sacks and, and causing a lot of disruption. I want our offensive line to really take over. And then, and this for this particular note, it's pass production. It's pass protection. Mm-hmm. You've got to give him time. Yeah. If he needs to make those reads, if, he, if, you, if we want him to grow and, and to take that step and to really be able to lead our team for the next several weeks, it's got to happen up front first. And that means Jack Nelson. That means T- Tanner Bordellini. He's got to get better at snaps. Did get a little bit better, a little bit. Um, and it's Fertney, it's Malman, it's everyone. Everyone's got to be playing their game. And and that also means that from a scheme perspective, I'm hoping that they leave the running backs in there a little bit to add a little more personal protector, um, blitz picking up. We have to be able to give him time. Because if he's under pressure, all that work in practice, all those reps, that decisions, all those things will get flustered very quickly. If he's got, if he's got a pocket that's breaking down constantly and he's having to run, he's not the best at it. Yeah. That's not going to give him that confidence that I feel like we really need to give him because Justin in one more week, we're playing Ohio state. So mm-hmm. we, this is a really important game for him to get his, his, his feels mm-hmm. and, and really understand what's going on because like we're going to have him for a while and I need to see that. So offensive line is absolutely massive. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, so much can go wrong here if the offensive line just isn't good for him off the bat. Like, if his feet start, if he starts getting happy feet in the pocket, this game's over. Like, he's you. You have a young guy who's already struggling to see the field. Most likely, you know, he might have a little bit of tunnel vision just because this, this is different. Like, he's not used to having somebody in his lap in practice. Like, they're not allowed to hit him. So this is the first time he's going to have bolts flying at him, and he's got to be the, ready to kind of deal with a real pass rush. And I, I realized he did it in high school, but this is it's that's not the same. Like there might be one guy on the field that's a college level player across from you. Now you're going to have four guys, and some of them might be NFL caliber guys. So you need to keep people off of him and give him an opportunity to survey the field so that the game can get easier for him as it goes on. Hopefully, we do a good job giving him some nice easy passes to start. You know we've. Longo has been pretty heavy on the short passes. Mm-hmm. And I realized some of that is Mordecai was, you know, that was his decision and choices, yeah. but I, it, it's going to be there. Like for him, it's just a matter of seeing what's the correct read and going to that. And I think we'd agree. There's, there were more open plays than we've been hitting so far this season. So oh, yeah. there is a chance that he looks better than Mordecai in the passing stats and maybe doesn't, you know, isn't as good as him in some of the other areas like poise and ability to use his feet. But if we get better in the passing game, it's going to open up the running game even a little bit more too. And that puts less pressure on Braylon to have to carry this game. And that's a big deal. Like they're going to be geared up to really stop the run in this game because they're going to think that Longo is going to come out here and we're going to go run heavy to try to take some of the pressure off of, off of Braden Locke. You know, that's the smart thing to do. Just don't make him do too much. The downside to that, the way I look at it, is you also don't let him get in a rhythm. And you also make it pretty obvious when he's going to be passing, which doesn't help out a young quarterback. Now, I think Longo may be a little bit more open to throwing on early downs than what we'd expect because of that exact thing. He wants to keep things a little bit more maybe in in on under control for us and get us in third and manageable. Um, but I don't expect him taking a lot of aggressive shots in this game. So it's going to be probably a lot of swing passes, check downs, you know, short stuff, maybe some drag routes. We'll see. But I really hope that we do some things to help him out in this game. And I think that we're capable of doing it. Like, just we don't have these long developing plays like we used to in the old Badger offense. And that's to our credit, it should help us out in this game, not having to put too much pressure on Braden Locke to sit back in the pocket and wait forever to sling it up. Yeah. And so much of our, of our um, success will be based on his confidence and how he does. But the other thing that we can really do, like you mentioned, Braylon Allen, and I'll leave this one off. It's impose your will. I said, going into the Purdue game that I was so focused on us imposing our will on this defense, Purdue's defense, similar to this 
It's not the best. And I think we absolutely need to dominate up front. So now run blocking. Yes, I do want Braylon on to get the ball early and often. I want Aker to get the ball early and often. I do want that to happen. Yes, I understand we need to get the quick passes, like you mentioned, um, and get his confidence up early for Braden Locke. Totally agree. But also it's about we need to just run the rock down the field and put it in these guys' faces. I absolutely think we can do that, like we did against Purdue. We were up 21-3 in that game, and it really put the game out of reach for us because we dominated early, Those that first half. Remember the first few games, it was we had a bad first half, we had a better second half. And in the Purdue game, we really stepped up our first half play. I expect to see that here. Similar situation. You're on the road against a team that's not the best defensively. You need to dominate up front. Give Braylon Allen the ball, mix up some play calls early, maybe throw in some play action that will also help Braden Locke. But I want to see that will impose because that's at the end of the day, you know, there's been some some comments about like our offensive identity and kind of where that is. And I know we're in kind of flux, right? I mm-hmm. do want your take on the offensive identity to kind of see where you are with this. But at the end of the day, our best player as of right now is still number zero behind the quarterback. I want him to get the ball. And I understand that I've said receivers need to step up and everyone needs to do their part. But this is a real critical piece, right? Because if you can do that, if we can run the ball down the field with this guy, with this guy and with Aker, then it opens up the pass. It gives Braden, Braden locks a little more, a little more confidence, right? He's not going to get that, that happy feet as much because he knows that he can always hand the ball off. And when he's in passing situ- situations, excuse me, then he, I think will have a little more confidence and be able to throw the ball a little bit better. Because at the end of the day, it's his first game, right? So give the guy behind the quarterback the ball and let him eat. Yeah, you're you're completely right there. And hopefully Braylon's actually healthy for this one. Um, but I think we need to get we need to run the ball at least 40 times this game. And I don't know how we do that. It's obviously not going to be 25 carries to Braylon, but if we could get him to 18 to 20, I'd be happy. And you know, maybe you get 15 out of acre, and then there's yeah. a couple of quarterback runs where it's maybe an RPO keeper or something like that. So if there, there's some ways to do some of this. I know Locke's not exactly a, a huge running threat, but he's got good enough athleticism that if if it's a bad read by the defense, he'll have some opportunity to pick up the – take the easy five yards and just get down. And that type of stuff is what you'd like to see from him. We saw it from Mordecai, but Mordecai has more explosiveness than what Locke is by a long shot. Um, so there's a lot of little things here. I think that we are probably going to end up still throwing it roughly 30 times this game. To me, it's more about how you throw than, than how many times it's like, we want to be in good, good situations when he's making pass plays. So it's not an obvious passing down where he's going to be out there as a sitting, sitting duck waiting to get teed off on by the defense. If we do that, then we're not doing him any favors and it's going to be a long day for him. If we can find him some nice, easy completions, you know, first and tens where we get maybe a, couple of you know swing passes or some of the running back passes and stuff and actually get some positive yardage on them that'd be huge for us or if maybe he'll have some luck over the middle you know we haven't really seen a lot of that Pauling has really stepped up I mean eight catches in each of the last two games he's got that opportunity to kind of be our go-to guy and hopefully we can we can actually get him in some good situations where he can get a couple of you know 10 15 yard catches or really helps us out and gets us kind of those little burst plays for us. Yeah. Before we get into our predictions, let's touch on the defense a little bit. It wasn't one of our listed three big things, but Illinois has given up 28 sacks, 28 sacks. That's four per game, by the way, for them. That's not good. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it, you know, look, our defense played fine against Iowa. We talked about that a lot. I think they should have a successful day, right? I mean, this team's averaging 20 points a game offensively. Illinois is. I, you got to think that the, the defense is going to be able to dominate here and to control the game a little more, get the ball back to the offense, give our offense a little more possessions, hopefully force some turnovers because they've also thrown nine interceptions. Um, so there's that. Uh, but, but where do you kind of see the defense in this game and how important do you think that their their role is going to be? Well, I mean, Luke Altmaier hasn't been anything special. I mean, in fact, he's been downright bad. So it's one of those things where I I feel like they're going to kind of be playing this game the same way that we are. They're going, to, they're going to want to run the football. They're going to want to give him some easy reads. I don't know how much they trust him in comparison to what we trust Locke. It's probably a horse apiece there because he's had some really bad games where he's he's really turned the ball over for them. And there's a chance that we can really make it a long day for him. I, I think defensively, I don't, I don't expect a ton of sacks, but I do expect pressure on him. And I do think that he's going to throw the ball up for grabs a little bit in this game. 
if we can get a couple of turnovers, it's a huge deal for us in this one because we really struggle to do that against Iowa. We need to get a couple of turnovers, get get the offense in, in some positive situations so when we take over, we can, can be more aggressive. They have a minus five turnover margin so far on the year, so hopefully we can add to that negativity. Rico Hallman, let's go, buddy. Yeah. Get a solid pick. All right, Justin. The Bucky Report predictions. Wisconsin, Illinois, 2.30 local time uh, this weekend. Wisconsin is averaging 27 points a game. Their defense is giving up 17. Illinois is averaging 20.3 20 point, 20. points a game and giving up 27. They've turned the ball over 14 times uh, to Wisconsin's 10, so that's not the greatest. But, uh, they've been, like I said, they've, they've given up 28 sacks. As far as their offensive production, uh, they average 7.1 yards per attempt, so not too horrible there. It's higher than what, what ours is. Mm -hmm. But on their rushes, they've rushed 225 times for an average of four yards per carry. So this is certainly something that feels like, even though we have a new quarterback, even though we're coming off a loss, still feels like a game we should win. Justin, what are you feeling as your score prediction? Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, conservative in this week compared to last week. Uh, I have it at 21-17 Wisconsin. Um, oh. I, I am a little fearful of how turnovers are going to tip this game because I think that's going to be a major factor. Um, and I, I do worry after seeing a team, an Iowa team that was averaging 3.8 yards per carry gash us and seeing Illinois roughly in that same ballpark. But it, it does appear that Illinois has a worse offensive line. So I'm hopeful that they won't be able to impose their will on us at all on the offensive side and we can contain their run game and, and keep them under, under control. Yeah, I mean, I'm similar to you. I'm going to be a little more conservative this week, but I think Illinois is a bad team. Like I said, they gave up 44 points to Illinois. Yeah, they did beat Maryland this past weekend, 27-24, which was a good win for them. But if you look at their schedule and who they've played and what they've done, it's not really been mm -hmm. good. That being said, you know if there's a game that Brett Bielema and Jim Leonard are going to be up for, it's this game, right? So there's that sure. element of it as well. We have a new quarterback. They're average. They're giving up 27 points a game. I think we score 24, and so that kind of puts us in a good spot. And I think they score 17. So similar to your score, I'm saying 24-17 Badgers. Uh, I do think we win. I think we officially will cover the spread because it's only two and a half. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I could I could care less about the I couldn't care less about the margin of victory. Just win the yeah. game. We need to win this game. We need to set things right. And we need Braden Lock to have a nice game, get some minutes under him, and you know work with his receivers, work with the O line, get Braylon Allen and Aker going because and it, we we shouldn't be looking ahead to Ohio State, but the bottom line is that's coming up. But it's about winning this game and getting back on track. Any any other final thoughts, man? No, I mean uh, this is definitely a week that we need to get some confidence back in this team and just the confidence in the the big picture when it comes to fickle, because it seems like people are having a little bit of, I, I guess, fear just based off of this, which we're four and two right now. I, I don't totally get it. It's the first year after a year we went six and six. So we kind of needed to be a realistic here and look at it and be like, Hey, we've already shown some improvement. We can show more improvement here. Let's, let's get this one and get us to five and two and, and just prepare ourselves for that Ohio state game. So let's get it done. Let's get headed in the right direction. And the rest of the season's ahead of us yet. Let's get this going and see if we can finish nine and three or even ten and two for Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Ryan still time. has that belief. Hey, you know, look, if we win this game and we're going to be so. We, yeah. By the way, we are going to be uh, in Madison next week for any of our listeners and watchers who are in Madison. We'll get some more details about yeah. where we're going to be. We're definitely going to try to get get to a bar, probably Scotty Bar, um, there on Regent Street before the game. Come out, meet us, say hi. Uh, hang out, talk Badger. So it'll be really exciting. But yeah, I mean, look, it's it's a game we absolutely need to win. We had a rough week last week. We will be back on Sunday uh, for, for our typical live show on the weekend to hopefully be in a more celebratory mood after last week's very, you know, difficult Sunday <laughs> show. <laughs> but thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you on Sunday on Wisconsin. I'm Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.